Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. This weekend, we're going to cover Service Master by Cornerstone, which is out helping our first responders to make sure that they are clean and safe and secure. We also have Stuart Lloyd Cohen, who's going to be on later in the program. He's an inspirational, motivational speaker, and so he's going to talk about some of the tips and ways that we can stay encouraged during this time. First and foremost, we always say we want to make sure that you and your families, your team are safe and healthy, because obviously, we're coming to you from our home studios. And uh, in this case, we're honored to be joined by someone who's in her home studio, and that is, uh, she's the CEO of Contemporary Media, Editor-in-Chief of Memphis Magazine, but Anna Traverse Fogel, how are you doing? I am doing as well as I could possibly be expected to be doing. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for having me. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're, so, we're hanging in there. Yeah, on your end, let's start, because Contemporary Media is kind of the umbrella, but um, mentioned Editor-in-Chief of Memphis Magazine. There's a lot more to it, though, so go ahead and describe Contemporary Media for the listeners so they understand the full scope of everything you all do. Yeah, sure. So I've been in my position since last summer, so still relatively new in this position. I've been with the company for, um, I guess, about two and a half years now. But contemporary media is a name that probably a lot of listeners won't know unless they're very like attuned to all of the little changes in the local media landscape. But what we, what we are is the, the parent company of the Memphis Flyer, the city's free alternative news weekly that many of your um, watchers and listeners will I'm sure be familiar with. And the Memphis Flyer has been around for 31 years now. Um, and also Memphis Magazine, um, which has been around since 76. Um, we also publish Memphis Parent and Inside Memphis Business, which is now part of Memphis Magazine, um, as well as assorted custom publishing things that we do in our um, imaginary spare time. <laughs> Well, and, you know, with each one of those, they serve a different purpose, right? And so mm -hmm. there's a different timeline in terms of the stories and the narratives and the deep dive versus more of, a, uh, of an urgency. So talk about that balance on your end of the deeper dive versus the more time sensitive. And obviously with what we're in, that's a game changer for everything. And we'll talk about that in a second. But give us kind of the landscape of the different audiences and the, and the roles they serve, so to speak. Yeah, of course. So the Memphis Flyer is, like I said, a free, it's classified as an alt-weekly. So an alt-weekly is an alternative news weekly. Um, and as you might guess from that, um, from that label, it does come out on a weekly basis. Um, so typically you can get a free print copy of the Flyer every Wednesday. Um, and pre-COVID, we were distributing to around um, 500 distribution points in town. We've had to modify that, of course, as many of the local businesses have closed, the ones that are not deemed essential. Um, so the flyer does come out weekly, and then, of course, it's um, reporters um, continue to share content digitally basically every day. So in terms of its digital presence, um, it's, it's updated on a, on a daily basis. Memphis Magazine comes out monthly um, at the beginning of each month. Again, it's updated digitally um, pretty much daily, although the churn of content for Memphis Magazine tends to be a little bit slower just because we're not trying to report like every single pivot in every single story. The magazine takes a longer view, tends to report on more culture, lifestyle, local history, local arts, all of those sorts of, of stories. Um, where the Flyers beat tends to be more primarily um, news, events, um, arts, but in a more what's going on this week kind of timestamp. Um, and Memphis Parent, as you might imagine, is a publication for local parents. It comes out in print um, 10 times a year, typically. Um, we are making a few little changes to that this year, so um, I would say stay tuned for that. Um, and like I said, Inside Memphis Business is a business-forward publication that we um, have rolled into Memphis Magazine since it really is, is reaching a very similar audience. Share how, obviously this has affected all of us. When you talk about the coronavirus and COVID-19 and everything that's taken place with a quarantine, this has dramatically affected on your end, your team, your storytelling, the timelines, as you mentioned, even the distribution, obviously. Share a little bit of how you view your role in terms of the storytelling aspect of what you're doing, because right now, I know you are sharing inspirational stories, those who are serving on the front lines, sharing those, the entertainment value and what we could be doing at home. So talk a little about just kind of how this is affecting on the business side, but what you view your role as. 
Yeah, so obviously this, is, this has changed um, really everything that we do in so many different ways. Um, everything from how our team interacts with each other um, to how we relate to our, our advertisers and how we see our, um, our commitment to them, how we see our commitment to our readers. It's really changed so many things. And I know that so many of your, of, of, again, the people listening to this will identify with this. It's really changed everything and changed it so quickly. So we, about three weeks ago, um, started going to remote work. Um, I made that decision a little bit before, I guess, some of the other organizations in town, but just based on what I considered at the time to be an abundance of caution and by about four days later was what everybody and their brother was doing. Um, and at that time we started, of course, using, using Zoom, just like everybody else, um, for, for our meetings and um, more of our reporters doing interviews over the phone. Um, and, and just really changing the way that we do business. Um, luckily our, our team is very dynamic and very like able to, um, to be flexible to different circumstances. So they've really handled that just like absolute champions. Um, it's also, as you said, affected our, um, the kind of what we're covering and, and how we're covering it. So, you know, typically the, the flyer is covering really a mix of, um, of news, but also culture and entertainment. Um, in terms of the, the news aspect, and, and this will sound very familiar to anyone who's like an avid or even a part-time news consumer, there is, it seems like no news organization anywhere um, that hasn't shifted its coverage to, um, to be really almost kind of dominated by, um, by COVID-19. So we have done everything from um, change the way that um, that our website is presented. So like we've added a, a whole little section when you go to memphisflyer.com that's like for the, the latest COVID-19 stories. Although, you know, when, when we added that, it seemed like we needed to, to put them in a special place. And then it became abundantly clear that like, actually that's going to be the majority of, of what we're doing now. Like that being said, the flyer is is more than is more than that, and I don't like I want to find that balance, and I think that our team is doing an excellent job of finding that balance between um, fulfilling our obligation to keep our readers informed, but also fulfilling our obligation to um, to tell the stories of Memphis as a whole and to tell them in a way that you might not get anywhere else. So. Um, you, well, know, you talked about like supporting musicians and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously that's a huge industry for Memphis, but you think, wow, there's a lot of musicians that should be out playing and getting paid and now they don't really have that avenue. Yeah, absolutely. So we've been, you know, we've been trying to share those stories about, you know, what musicians are doing in the wake of all of this. So we have a, a spread in every week's flyer, which people can now um, much more readily um, access the flyer as a as a PDF that they can read on their phones or on their on their laptops tablets um, so rather than you know pick up a print paper although we are still printing we are still distributing into local businesses that are deemed essential so grocery stores other places um, cash saver they fly out of there other other places as well um, so the flyer is, is still in print although we have gone to to buy weekly just during this time um, but we're really pushing the, the flippable PDF version. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we have a spread, uh, a two page spread in, in every week's flyer that for many, many years has been called stepping out. And under the circumstances, um, we kind of looked at that and we went, wait a second, people aren't stepping out. So we changed it to staying in um, and giving you ideas for like how to stay active and you know engaged with the local cultural community without leaving your house so you know a lot of local musicians are doing live stream performances um of course like opera memphis has done their wonderful like opera on a um like truck bed um and and just other options like that that people can pursue to um to kind of stay inspired and stay um, stay engaged, even as we're like taking the safety measures that we're taking. Share some of the stories, and it can be from the Memphis Flyer or from Memphis Magazine, 
but some of the stories that put a smile on your face, some of the recent ones, or even some of the ones coming out soon, give us maybe one or two that just put a smile on your face for the inspiration and just what you're able to share. Yeah, so um, we had a, a cover story in the flyer that, that came out just this week called On the Front Lines, and it's about um, Memphians who are, who are still working while the whole city hunkers down. So it's everybody from, um, you know, a, a convenience store, like a, a pharmacy worker, um, to a doctor, um, a CBD store owner, like people who are, who are still, um, doing, doing business in the midst of all of this. So like, what's it like to be a clerk at Walgreens in the midst of Corona? Um, so we talked to one and, um, and just really trying to share the stories of, of those people who are still, getting out there and, and working hard and, and doing the jobs that they do um, to help keep the rest of us safe um, and to help keep us um, you know, supplied with the things that we need. Because there really are still so many people who, um, you know, if, if you drive around, like even while we are staying at home and sheltering in place and doing all of that good stuff, there are a lot of people who, you know, who, who don't have jobs where they can go do them from, um, from their home offices. Um, and, we're also in the, the magazine that'll come out in, in May, we're talking to, um, we're talking to a, a restaurant owner um, about you know, the effect of this on, on his business. And we're, we're hoping that we can convince him to, um, to share a recipe or two as well. So stay tuned for that. Because um, of course, you know, we usually would offer a, a restaurant review and, and that now seems um, not not quite the right spirit while the, the dining rooms are closed. But that being said, our wonderful Michael Donahue and a few others have done pieces on um, what you can get carry out from restaurants that are offering that. So really trying to lift up the restaurant community as well. I don't and, think that's the part I like is that the the restaurants, the businesses, the retailers, they're having to pivot at the same time, obviously, like we're talking, you're pivoting too, but you're pivoting in the spirit of how can we help and, yeah. and using it as a resource, a community resource so that we are all in this together. But like you said, it doesn't do it service if we're doing a restaurant review instead, let's do it this way so that we can try to help each other out. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've actually like, I'm planning to write something myself for our May issue about like baking bread because it, it, it seems to me that everybody and their brother is baking bread. Like you can't buy yeast. It's, there is no yeast. So like the yeast that I have was dropped off to me um, in like in my mailbox on my front porch by a friend who saw a post that I had put up on Facebook about not being able to find yeast. And she'll like, she's like, I'll bring you some yeast, Anna. So I'm literally going to write a story about that and like share my little recipe for bread um, because everybody's just doing things differently. And, and so of course our, our coverage has to change to to meet those needs and the same with our relationships with our advertisers i mean one thing that we're really trying to to focus on um with our advertisers is not just like how can we help you by selling you a quarter page ad but how can we help you communicate what it is that you're going through how your business is pivoting what do you need from us and and how can we how can we best help you get that message out to as many people um, as possible in the city? Um, so really approaching it more from a communications standpoint um, than just kind of cut and dry um, advertising. Because it really is, I think it's so important that we do everything that we can to, to all lift each other up so that, so that we make it through this together. I mean, the reality is there will be small local businesses that that won't see it to the other side of this. I mean, I think that's just that's just the the cold hard truth, but I see our place as being sort of a conduit. I mean, we have so many relationships with with other local businesses, be it from an sales and marketing perspective to a coverage perspective to a distribution perspective. Um, and I, I really just want us to to build those relationships and maintain them so that as many of, of, of them um, can, still, can still be with us when we make it to the other side of this. I do think it's, it's important to, to keep in mind that there will be another side. Um, you know, there, there will be a moment when, when we can all kind of 
come back from our little groundhog holes and um, and and see the see the light of day again and and see each other again. And I want to make sure that our community is is stronger for it, not weaker. I mean, even as we're all staying apart and keeping our distance, I think in a weird way that gives us an opportunity to focus more about what kind of community do we want to build? What do we want to be part of when we're on the other side of this? I think it makes us a lot more intentional about all of those things. You as the CEO and also editor in chief, what would your words of encouragement be to other business owners and business leaders trying to obviously weather through this, encourage their team? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're doing on your end. So what would your words of encouragement, what would be your, you know, words of advice to them? Yeah, I mean, I would say just from from my experience, what what I'm doing and, and what I would encourage others to do is as much as possible, use this as a moment to take a step back and and think about what you're doing and who it's for and what you want that to look like when we can all I don't even want to say return to normal because I don't think that what we return to will be the same normal as where we were before, but when we get to some sort of new normal, who do we want to be and who do we want to be for and how do we best want to serve them? I mean, I think those of us who are in, um, who are in positions of, of any kind of leadership, um, no matter what your title is, there's so many people who are in positions of leadership, no matter, again, where on the structure or totem pole they are. It's like, how, how do you want to build a community around you um, that is stronger on the other side of this? And, and how can you best make that happen? Um, in terms of like communicating with, with the team, I mean, I've, I've been like just checking on, checking on them, sending them notes of encouragement, and really trying to stay as, um, as, as actively um, in touch with them as, as possible when we're all in our separate little bunkers. Um, you know, we've, we've, if anything, in some cases probably been talking more now that we're not physically in the same office anymore, just trying to, to keep in touch and, 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 um, and kind of stay on the same page, but also use those opportunities for a little levity. Like it's, it's kind of fun to be able to see into people's home offices and like a kid walks by in the background or, you know, the, the dog starts barking or whatever it is. I think if anything, um, we all become a little bit more human as a result of all of this. And I think that's, that's a good thing. Um, you know, and, and I would also say just, um, just to, to try to make sure too, that like you're also making the best decisions that you can to, to be, as well positioned as you can um, to be on the other side of this. So, you know, there are so many opportunities right now for, um, you know, to apply for, for funding, whether it's through the, through the CARES Act, the Payroll Protection Plan. There are lots of things that, that small local businesses can be doing um, to really shore up um, their resources and, and get through this, weather, weather the storm and get to the other side. Um, and you know, all of the advice that, that I've gotten, cause I've, I've been asking so many people, um, from, you know, friends to mentors, to bankers, to lawyers, to everything else, like, what would you do? And, and really the, the overriding, um, advice seems to be like, one thing that you should definitely, um, definitely do without question is like apply for all of the things <laughs> and like kind of ask questions later. I mean, make sure that you are dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's and you know what you're getting into, you know what you're doing, you know if, if there are liabilities, what they are. Um, but do what you can now um, to, to get those applications in, whether it be for um, Small Business Administration money, um, the payroll protection plan seems like a good option for lots of small local businesses. There are lots of other things out there depending on what industry you're in. And I would say take advantage of all of that stuff um, and, you know, and, and use that to your advantage. Um, and also, I mean, I do think it's important right now that we all try as much as possible to, um, to pivot, to be flexible, to um, if our previous business model is no longer the one that, that works right now, to be willing to make those changes and to trust that our community will 
understand why we're making those changes. I mean, we, we announced, as I mentioned, that like the flyer is for a period of time going to print every other week. We're going to, you know, reassess that in June. And if the world is back to some kind of new normal in June, then we'll go back up to weekly. And, you know, and if not, then we might stretch that out a little bit longer. But right now, that's the date that we'll reassess. But I mean, that's an unprecedented move for us. But, you know, we looked at everything and we looked at our distribution points and we looked at um, the kind of where this is trending. And we decided, like, we need to still be here. We need to still be strong, but we need to do this differently. And um, we do still want to have a free paper out for people. But, you know, our the, the mechanism for doing that is different than it was a month ago. Yeah. And I will tell you, um, when we made that decision, I had some trepidation that we would get, you know, some flack from it, like people saying, oh, you know, that's, that's really bad. And um, can't believe they would do that. And, and I can tell you that, like, to a person, everybody that I've talked to about that, or even just seen talking about it, heard talking about it, they're all like, oh, that makes total sense. Of course, you would do that. Um, completely get it. That's, that seems like a sane move. Um, and the same for like, we put out the call um, a few weeks ago that like, if you've ever thought about becoming one of our frequent flyers, the people who contribute either on a one-time basis or five bucks a month or whatever you're comfortable with, if you've ever thought about doing this, like, and if you can afford it and if it fits in your budget, and I know that a lot of people are, are really hurting right now financially, but like, if you are someone who wants to do that and, it, and for whom it makes sense to do that, like there's never been a better time. And the response was absolutely humbling and powerful. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, those are really two key things. Don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to pivot. Even if you've yeah. been doing the same thing for a long time and even if you don't like asking for help, um, it's, it's a good moment to try both of those things. Very, very uh, sage advice. Last questions. The easy one is uh, where do we go? So websites, social media, mm -hmm. where do we go to be in the know and be in the loop. Yeah, so um, the Memphis Flyers website is memphisflyer.com, memphismagazine.com, insidememphisbusiness.com, memphisparent.com, and then social handles are um, just Memphis Flyer, Memphis Magazine, um, Memphis Parent. And um, Memphis, Memphis Magazine is promoting a lot of the Inside Memphis business stuff right now. So I would just encourage people if they want to read our business content to go to memphismagazine.com or, or follow at Memphis Magazine. And the same for um, the flyer is, is really doing a heck of a job of, of keeping people in the know, but also keeping them inspired. So that's just at Memphis Flyer. Well, Anna, thank you for all you and your team do. We greatly appreciate it. And thank, thank you for you coming Thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate you.